Time for a prospect update of those Swedish Red Wings prospects, and we bring on Mikhail Holmes of Smart Scouting to do so today on Lockdown Red Wings. You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to Locked On Red Wings. We're your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. Scotty, also host over at uh, Locked On Tigers. And today we have a special guest, a recurring guest here, although it is my first time talking to him, Mikhail Holm of Smart Scouting. He's our resident Swedish prospect guy. How's it, how's it feel to be the resident Swedish prospect guy for the Locked On Red Wings, Mikhail? All right, feels good. It's feels always a good how feeling. Much, how much better are we than Locked On Sharks? You're better, or I don't know. You're both good, I guess. No, you said better. No, no, you said better. No, 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 no. The, 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 the issue is, I realize that you don't have William Eklund, so I can't talk about him on this podcast. But you know who we so. can talk about? Simon Edvinson. There you go. That makes and up for it. We're going to talk about the, the most notable. Fortunately, the Red Wings have a lot of Swedish prospects, guys, like a metric crap ton. We're going to try and focus on the ones that are the biggest. And first and foremost is Simon Edmondson. Mikhail, how has he been doing? He's been doing well, uh, really well, I would say. Um, he uh, He's cooled down a little bit after his, he had a hot start to the season. He's cooled down a little bit, had some, some minor injury issues and stuff like that, being gone from play. But he's been really, really good. Yeah, and we had uh, Tony Ferrari on about a month and a half ago, and he talked about Simon Edmondson having a very similar trajectory as a year plus one draft player as Moritz Sider. And that's like a pretty, I mean, more, we, we're seeing what Moritz Sider is doing in the NHL right now. A lot of people have him as the Calder favorite, or if he's not the favorite, number two next to Trevor Zegras. That's, so that's a big comparable to make. Simon Evanson, and to, you just said that he's cooled down, but do you think he's on a trajectory to be NHL ready the following season, or do you think he's going to take a little bit more time to develop? Well, I mean, Mort Sider is on his D plus three now, correct? Yeah. Yes. So Simon Evanson has two years to reach to that level, and I think that's perfectly fine to, to think that, but I don't think Simon Evanson might have the same huge uh, offensive upside that Mort Sider has shown this, se- this season. I see uh, Edmondson as more of a, a very good defensively uh, defenseman with a, with, a, with, a, with a very good uh, transition game. But uh, I'm not sure he's going to put up the, the same amount of points as Sider has done this year uh, and be as, uh, as uh, prominent on the, in the, on the offensive side. I, uh, I I think uh, we actually just talked about this on yesterday's show, but I think on draft night, a lot of people kind of labeled him as the the boomer bust pick, right? Like he was either going to be incredible or or like be one of the worst players drafted in the first round. Has has that I guess stigma kind of changed around him? Like is he is he a little bit more well respected? Are people saying like his his floor is rising a little bit a little bit, or is he still kind of? viewed at as as that as this big like boomer bust kind of prospect well i never saw him as this sort of boomer bust guy i saw him as a boom guy but i never saw like really low ceiling for him i always saw him like if he didn't turn out as, as you'd hope he'd probably still be a bottom pairing defenseman in the nhl this sure. was always my thought because he was always very very good as a, defensively i thought last year um but yeah like the boom is still there, of course, and he's shown a really high ceiling this year in the SHL, being almost like at times being one of the best defensemen in the league. But uh, yeah, so like the boom is still there, and I that's why I wasn't really opposed to the pick when the Detroit picked him, because although I was a lot bigger fan of uh, uh, William Eckler at the time, and still am. Uh, Simon Edmondson was still a really, really good pick at that time. I, was, I would never had an issue with that. So I think just the boom is still there. I never saw the bust. I think he's going to be an NHL player, and now the floor might be just that he's a, uh, like a number five or number four on the, on just at his floor sure. now, maybe rather than a number six or seven in the NHL. So I think uh, 
I just think the floor has arisen uh, a lot this season, but I never saw the low floor that other people saw uh, before. And that's something that uh, you saying that you've seen the floor rise a lot is really re- reassuring because, you know, I heard it too, Scotty. I heard people saying that like low floor, high ceiling type player, but you did mention um, William Eklund and that was the big controversy as far as controversies go with Steve Eiserman as the general manager of the Red Wings, um, that people thought he should have taken Eklund considering that they'd already taken more at Saturn and he looked NHL ready. And you already said that you think Eklund is the better choice and you still stand by that can you give us a little bit more depth as to as to why you believe that uh for context right now guys simon evanson has 12 total points in 26 games one goal 11 assists uh with Frölunda over in the swedish hockey league why do you think that eklund is still the better better choice over simon evanson because i think william eklund is a top line winger and i think and i think he's a he's a nice possibility to be a top six center as well because he's shown so far this season that he plays as, his play as a center with you, Gordon, has been quite good. And it's been surprisingly good to me because I never saw him as a center. I still don't see him as a center, but I think as a just a top-line winger with the potential to score around 90 points maybe some a few times in his career. Uh, I think that's a higher season than Simon Edmondson, who's not going to be this uh, giant uh, offensive producing defenseman which i think a lot of people confuse him with because he is very flashy he's very skilled he, he skates really really well and he, he's a great uh, great handler of the puck but i think he's his ceiling in the offensive zone is, isn't as high as uh, a lot of people hope i don't think he's very good on the power play i don't think he's or very good but i don't think he's great on the power play uh, I think he's better served as a transition guy, and he's going to be a great fit with Detroit, having having more cider in on one pairing and Simon Evans on another would work really well. Or them t- together, of course, would also work. But like, I think just the I think the offensive ceiling for Simon Evans is, isn't as high as uh, people hope, and I think I'd rather have the guy who could score nine, possibly could score ninety points. Sure, the. Uh... We, you talked about like the, the offensive upside and ceiling. So what, I guess specifically, what attributes does he hold that makes him have such a high ceiling just purely defensively? Like what is, what, what are, what is he hanging his hat on to make him such a, such a threat in the D zone? He is great positionally. I think he always finds the correct position. He adjusts himself to the attackers when they move around. Like he always has, has puts himself between the net and the attacker. He also has great gap control when Skitty is coming towards him and keeps them outside. He has great reach, of course, because he's long, he's like six foot six now or something. So like he, he has great reach, just keeping them away from like he's keeping them at a distance. They can't really uh, uh, stick count their way through him because he he knows when to step up, he knows when to back off. Um, and then yeah, he's I, I just think he just plays a very solid defensively game with defensive game, which is very. Uh, also going to develop a lot of playing with, with uh, Frölunda, who develops their defenseman really, really well. Awesome. Um, so there's a lot of other prospects we want to get to, um, and we'll get to that in segment number two. But first, got to talk to you guys today about BetOnline.net. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues its march through the playoffs right to the big game in a couple weeks. At couple weeks, it's this Sunday, guys. Big game is on Sunday. Uh, BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just football. BetOnline has up-to-the-minute info on props, pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, along with live real-time updates of current games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available for tw- the 2022 season. BetOnline. BetOnline. Where the game starts. All right, Mikhail. Now, this might not be what everyone's second favorite uh, Swedish prospect is, but I'm going to be selfish here. And uh, I want the second one we talk about is William Wallander, because I have a soft spot for defensemen. I grew up a defenseman myself. I love to hear about the development of them. William Wall- uh, Wallander was the 2020 or 2020 second round pick of the Red Wings at 32nd overall. Uh, he's playing with Rogel. Am I pronouncing that even close to correctly? Yeah, no. But... <laughs> <laughs> It's the thought that counts, I guess. Uh, he said, he said, no. I mean, no, but. Uh, he's got 12 points in 30 games with him this season. Um, Mikhail, what have you seen from Wallander? 
Um, he's been quite good offensively, which is his his playing style. Like he's a very good offensive defenseman. Um, he's had a lot of puck luck this season, which is, doesn't bode well because he doesn't drive play very well in the SHL right now. He has like a core C percentage of forty one percent right now, That's which is great. <laughs> Brian and is a he, huge Corsi fan. Huge. Yeah. The like biggest Corsi one isn't you'll everything, be. but it's just like it's just easy to check how they're doing, and he isn't doing really well. And he has a PBO of one hundred four and an all nice scoring percentage of twelve. So, like he's he's sure. having a lot of puck plug this year, but um, like there's the tools are there. He just needs to continue to develop and. It's gonna take a little while until he's he's really really good but, and ready for the NHL. But I think just take their t- Detroit are good with taking their time with their prospects. So just take your time, let him develop. He he could be a he could be the offensive defenseman that Simon Edmondson might not be. And just he's great in the offensive zone, just dancing on the blue line. Also a big defenseman. <laughs> Detroit just picks six or four and above, it seems like, when they pick defensemen, which is fine because they pick the good ones and not the and not the bad ones. I believe so that far. is a philosophy of Iserman is only take big D man because he did that in Tampa too, and that's how they ended up with guys like Victor Hedman. I mean, you only take tall guys because his philosophy is you can't teach size. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even to the goalie thing, right? I mean, the, you know, they they took they took Kosa, who's massive. He's like, oh well, you can't you can't teach being huge and filling up the whole net. So that's uh, that I I know Mikhail. I know we had a lot of conversations about Kosa and Jesper last year. Um, yeah. With uh with Wallander, what you said that it's probably going to take him a few years to to reach that that potential that's kind of put out on him. If it, like guesstimate, like how long how long do you think we're talking as far as development plan goes? I'm going to say at least two years more. Sure. So, uh, two like years. Said- D but it doesn't four. have to be in Sweden, though. Like, he could be in the AHL. Like, moving on to AHL next season, that should be fine. Like, I'm not sure how his contract looks with Ragle, so I think he has a few more years there. But if the, when, like, getting him into the AHL and the smaller size ranks would be would be smart, I think, just to, like, get him adjusted there. You said Ragle there, right? Ragle? Ragle. Ragle. Okay. Oh, yeah. Say it, Brian. No, no. Say it. I don't know. You you wanted it to be right. Say it, dude. Say it. I regret this. Uh, (laughs) Pivot. 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 (laughs) Cut that. Cut that. Cut that. Um. (laughs) Good lord. What have I done to myself? (laughs) Um. Another uh, Red Wings prospect that everyone's really high on that they want to see uh play play soon. Um. Twenty twenty second round pick as well. Fifty first overall. Theater Nierbach. He has, he's playing with Frolunda as well. So he's a teammate of Simon Edmondson. He's got seven points in 34 games. The production isn't quite what we were hoping for out of Niederbach right now, but what have you seen from his play and his progression of his, uh, his, you know, his skills and his development? I think he's a solid SHL, SHL, SHL player. Now I can't even speak to SHL player. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I think he's just, he plays consistently. He doesn't play that much. I think he has, yeah, he has time on ice. It's 10 minutes per game, so it isn't that much, but he does really well with it. He, he, uh, he plays, he's a good defensive uh, guy, center, but he also can produce offense. So I wouldn't expect him to become a world beater, but I'm, I'm sure he's going to be an NHL player someday. And he could be a very solid piece for, for the Red Wings in the future. What uh? What do you think, like center or winger? What What do you think he's he's gonna end up being? I mean, I guess the safe play would probably just say he's gonna be a winger. But do you think there is a a slight chance that that he could turn a turn a productive be a productive center? I think he could be a decent center. Um, I'm not sure if he's gonna be anything. He could be a third line center, maybe. But I think. Uh, I think if you want to have him higher up in the in, in the lineup, then probably sure. a winger. But I mean, I wouldn't like be surprised if he becomes like a Johan Larson type of player. He does, does work very well as a fourth line center uh, everywhere he goes, and if he can do that on the Red Wings, I think that would be great. Um, so yeah, I think that's maybe some, something you you look towards. Um, but if you play him as a winger, maybe he can 
use his offensive skills a little bit more. We all know he can score a lot of points. Uh, he's proven that in the junior leagues, in the SHL, he doesn't really get that chance. So, yeah, I think uh, just if you want the offense from probably moving to the wing, if you want him to become a defensive center, then just keep him at center. Yeah. Well, okay, cool. Um, another teammate of Edvinson and Wallander, uh, Elmer Soderblom, made headlines a couple of years ago during World Juniors with some just real pretty stick work right out in front of the net. Um, I haven't seen much from him on social media since then, although he's got a pretty, he's get producing at a pretty uh, healthy clip with Ferlunda this season, 20 points in 34 games. Do you see uh, Elmer Soderblom's path to the NHL coming anytime soon? Um, I mean, maybe he develops during the summer and tries to like fight for a spot at camp next year. But I think it'd be at least another year before he he should be discussed in the NHL. He's done. He's taken a lot of good good steps uh, this year, become much stronger, much more protective of the puck. Uh, he's six foot seven and uh, heavy, but he was really easy to push off the puck, which is uh, which is annoying when you have a player like that when he's with, that big. Um, <laughs> Yeah, like he was pushed off the puck against junior players very easily, and I was that was like one of my big concerns because if you have that that, that frame and that kind of reach, you should be able to hold off uh, players that are like uh, seven inches shorter than you. So <laughs> he's um, massive, bro. Yeah, he is yeah, massive. He's, he's, he's <laughs> but he's he's done a lot better with that, and he's playing really well in the SHL now. And um, he gets a lot of opportunity. He plays on the first power play for Frodo, so he just gets served pucks by the the by Ryan Lash, who's the best playmaker in the SHL basically. So he just gets a lot of points from there. But he he does really well. I'm 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 pleased with his development, and I think he could be common any shell play, which is not what I thought uh, just a year ago. Well, and a lot of the times, too, with guys who are so big, so young, is they don't really have, like, a good good center of gravity yet because they, they're not used to it. That and is so, yeah. and it, Scotty's like a <laughs> – Scotty's a giant, too. He's well, – you're 6'6". Six, six. You, you, you grow quickly, and uh, so, it takes a little bit to get coordinated. That is, yeah, that you're is, basically that is a correct. beanstalk. Um, well, I, I was never – Maybe thin, not you. But yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Elmer Soderblom, he's, according to Elite Prospects, I, I don't know if this is accurate or not, he's close to 240 pounds now, which is a lot yeah. heavier than he was taken when he was drafted. He's starting to fill out, which is probably, and he's getting used to his size maybe more. So hopefully as he gets older and you know grows into his size more, he'll be a lot harder to knock off the puck and become a huge uh, asset in the NHL level. The other big problem with guys that big is they're not very uh, swift, you know, not very light-footed. Um, what have you seen from his footwork? Because that's like my big thing that I'm worried about with big guys. Yeah, that has developed uh, quite a lot the last year and a half. Uh, the last, uh, I think like last preseason, I thought he was very slow still. And he came back from an injury just before or right onto the World Juniors and he looked a little bit quicker. He looked a little bit stronger on his feet. And now I think I, I don't have an issue with his skating really. Like yeah, first few quick, first few steps he needs to still work on because that's the most important, almost the most important thing in the NHL because you need to be uh, quick at the start uh, and then uh, your full speed is, isn't as important. So I think uh, he needs to keep on working on the quick step. Uh, his uh, his skating is fine now, I think. And what is most impressive with him is his, his technique and his, his puck handling. It's, it's incredible, especially for a guy his size. And just the way like he, he can move from one side to the other with the stick, and just like it's such a long width, like range. He moves the puck mm -hmm. when he when he takes it from one side into the other. So um, that's very impressive, and uh, I think that's going to work really, uh, really well for him. Can we? Do we have time? Can we do Johansson really quick? Absolutely, go for it. All right. I, I just want, like, really quickly before I, I know we want to get into this upcoming draft and stuff, but uh, Johansson's one of my favorite prospects in the organization, and I just feel so far this season for him. Uh, he's had a really good season. He has had some defensive issues I've seen and not doing – but well, he's already um, at the same amount of points as he had last year. 
for example, in SSO in uh, in six fewer games. So his point production is better this year. He he is taking a step towards becoming an, uh, one of the leading defensemen at Ferry Stubb. So, so I think. Oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. So I think I know. I was just going to say. So I think he's doing really well, and I think moving him over to North America for next season would be a smart smart move. Uh, okay, that was going to be my question because he's obviously he he just turned twenty one. I I think in January. So he's he you know he, he's a little bit more than just a D plus one kind of a guy. So that that was my next question is when when do you think he he's going to move over here? So next year. Yeah, I think you're moving into the AHL next year and getting getting in closer and. Just keep on working, giving him the Jonathan Bergen treatment. Will right, be, sure. Will be smart. Fair enough. So, so, but yeah, he, his skating and the uh, uh, puck abilities are really what sets him out or stand, make him stand out. So, I think he's going to be a solid piece for the Rangers in the future. The Red, Red Wings, sorry. <laughs> I can't talk anymore. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> it's Brian's <laughs> fault. Just blame Brian. I asked how to pronounce one thing, and everything's just fall <laughs> from there. Why don't you yeah. say that? By the way, we're still waiting on your your version of it. I say say it one more time. Ro- Rogel, how do you pronounce it? Rogel. Yeah, Rogel. go for it. It's the R. How do you pronounce the R? <laughs> Rogel. You yeah. nailed it, dude. That's Great right. job. Yeah. Good job. Pat myself on the back. Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to teach the, the regional version to say it as well because they they can't say R down there where oh. they're located. So, does it like it? Or it's something dialects. like that? Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to try. Oh, let's go. go. Let's go, though. Let's, let's go. <laughs> let's go straight to rockauto.com because this episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you ever need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts to, on their computer, choosing only the brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using rockauto.com. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain supply or car dealership? Rockauto.com is a family business serving do it yourselfers for over 20 years. Go explore the easy-to-use website today and find a solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in their How Do You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts you will ever need, rockauto.com. How do you feel about that segue, Scotty? That was beauty, man. That was a beauty. That was good. I'm, I'm trying. The whole like last couple minutes, I was like, "How do I segue this? How do I? How do I make Scotty <laughs> proud?" I'm glad that that's why you want to do it to make me proud and that not make a you know quality product. I'm very uh, I'm very motivated by positive feedback, so you know, just I'm I'm mind. always down for some positive feedback, man. <laughs> I got you, except for your pronunciation of of <laughs> yeah, uh, pronunciation of what pronunciation? No, wait, no, what's Scotty? No, yeah, no. that's what I thought. That's what I thought. <laughs> Hi, Mikhail. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. good, good. Uh, <laughs> let, let's transition now to talking uh, the 2022 entry level draft. Um, what Swedish prospects have stood out to you? Um, and in regard to where the Red Wings are going to be drafting, probably anywhere from the 8 to 15 range. Um, 15 would probably be a little bit on the high end, but with the way they're performing right now, they're not going to, they're going to be a high, low, uh, high, high, low, high, ten, uh, what am I saying? 8, 9, 10, know, 11, man. 12, 13. Somewhere I, in that range. I really don't know what you're That's saying. what I'm trying to say. <laughs> with regards, with that in mind, who do you think is the most attractive Swedish prospect? There, I got the question out. Let's go. <laughs> so I have I have two Swedish prospects there, uh, maybe three. I'm, I'm thinking of moving one of them up. But I think for me, I have Noah Strand and Kalo Delius, both play for you, Gordon. Uh, the same team as William McLean's from Alexander Holt and so on. Alvin Greve for you, you Red Wings uh, fans. Um, I think those two are the ones that stands out for me. I have four, maybe five Swedes in the first round right now. I moved. I had five before, but I've moved uh, Martin Casper from Rögle down a little bit, and he's not, maybe not in my first round anymore. But I think the four players are. Um, 
Kevin Davies and Östlund, Jonathan Lecker i Mackey and uh, Liam Ögren. And they all play for Djurgården. They all wow. are. Uh, yeah, Djurgården has a great crop this year. Uh, four players wow. we could go in the first round. The thing with Odelius and Östlund is that they are ranked in the second round on Bob McKenzie's list. So wow. they they might be able in, be able to be picked up later. So I wouldn't take them in, in that range that you are in right now. Or I would take them, but like if they will be able to get them at late first or sure. early second, then I would choose I would I would trade down or pick them up later. So I think um, if you're looking at a Swede in that range, that probably is smart to pick is probably Jonathan Becker Mackey, who seems to be the top ranked Swede on on the NHL teams list. He is a great sweet name. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He has Sweet a name. name, so, <laughs> 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 so uh, yeah, he's a great shooter, very skilled, moves fast. Um, could probably compare him to Jakub Braun a little bit, maybe. Oh, we'll um, take that. Be, Hell yeah, like, that the worst uh, comparison. I think Braun, like, like Mac needs to work on a few stuff. He needs to be working to getting closer to the net when he gets shots. He, he plays a very perimeter game right now plays on the outside but he works really hard like he does his defensive work really well so I think he, he has most of the things you want from a forward uh, so I think it just he, he'd be a smart choice I would have take another Swede or two ahead of him but like if he's in that range and you take him yeah that would be the worst but I think there's other players from the rest of the world that will be available in that range that would be probably smarter pickups um, so you talked about Jonathan Lekari Ma- Mackey. I think I got that up yeah. pretty good. Um, no, you didn't. What about – shut up, Scotty. <laughs> uh, what about Kale Odelius? You, you talked about him as one of your favorite uh, Swedish prospects playing for Deer Garden. He's Nailed a defense. He's a defenseman. I'm trying really hard today, guys. I'm really trying. You're doing well. You're doing Thank well. Thank you. You don't have to lie to him, Kale. You don't have to lie to him. No, he's I doing just, well. He's doing well. It's fine. He he listened to my he's thing not. about positive reinforcement. He's he's giving me that positive <laughs> reinforcement. Um, Kale Ode- Adelius, because you know I like I said earlier, I have a soft spot for defensemen. The Wings' defensive prospects are they're actually pretty solid. Like they could have a solid defensive core going forward. But what have you seen from him that makes you think he's one of the better Swedish prospects from the defensive end? He is a great four-way skater. He moves really great in like all four directions. He is a very smart puck carrier. He passes the puck well. He's very uh, skilled with his stick. Um, he, I think, just like if he gets another gear in his skating and becomes a little bit quicker, a little bit faster in everything he does, he just like gain that extra step to to become a better player. He would could become the best defenseman in this draft, and that's why I have him so high compared to a lot of other yeah. people. Sweet. That's great to hear. Um, Scotty, should we ask him the riddle? I have one more question. I have one okay, more prospect, actually. So uh, if you look on elite prospects, there's a defenseman. And it, he currently is labeled as retired, but there's rumors that he might come oh. out of retirement and, and be in the draft. So uh, there's, a, there's a defenseman named Brian Fisher that's actually on elite prospects. And I'm, I'm just wondering... <laughs> I hate you so much, Scotty. <laughs> Mikhail, Brian, oh, no, he's looking me Brian, up. Brian has an elite prospects page, Mikhail, and it, it has him labeled as retired. <laughs> <It's really laughs> <cool. laughs> so I'm just curious if, if you think, you know, if you've seen him play, I don't think he's played over it. And, uh, Definitely <laughs> over, not. <laughs> over over the, uh, the, the sea there. But, you know, if, if, if you have to take a look at Brian here, what where, where do you think he's fallen in the draft? I think Elite Prospects has most like, a forward, too. I mean, he's he's fallen. Like, how old are you, Brian? 26. <laughs> so you were eligible for, like, the 2013 draft? Yeah, the same. I think it would have been the same draft as Dylan Larkin because Dylan Larkin's six months younger than me. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would guess that you would fall for another – uh, nine years at least. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for your expert opinion on, on what Brian. Well, I, I want to hear what he has to say about my skating and playing ability, though. What yeah, no one even knows. No one knows. No you one don't knows. get PT, man. 
Um, no, bring, bring, me, bring me some bring me some tape and i can tell you you suck bro <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> there may be a there may be film uh floating around of me getting my butt kicked in that fight i got into um, yeah brian's an enforcer by the no, way no i'm That's, not he's an enforcer he gets <laughs> he gets into fights a lot brian showed up one day we were going to record he had a he had a men's lean game and he comes home and he shows up with bruises and cuts all over his face and goes hey man I went, what the <laughs> hell? He's like, yeah, I got in a fight in my men's league game. So ever since then, we call him Brian the Enforcer. <sighs> See what yeah, I have to deal with? His play style. <laughs> oh, also, the riddle. Yes, the riddle. Ha- have you heard of the riddle of the guy who... Should you say the riddle and then afterwards ask, have you ever heard this riddle before? I guess. Yeah, let's I, do it We, we haven't done that with anyone. But sure, sure. Okay, so a guy rides into town on a horse, okay? And he rides in on Friday. He then leaves the town three days later, and it's still Friday. He's riding out of town on Friday, I guess would be the way to word it. How is that possible? He's the dumbest shit I know. <laughs> Um, the horse's name was Friday. So you uh, haven't heard that, I'm assuming. Yeah. No. I was that 0 for 3? 0 for 3? Um, no, somebody said yes. Well, not on the pod. I think it was my roommate when we, before we were recording. My roommate, Troy. Well, that did, that did happen. Yeah, yeah, you might be right. And then he Whatever, was like, man. you wanted to get him on the pod as a guest just so you could have somebody say oh, yes. Oh, yeah, because no. your girlfriend also has heard it right yeah yeah okay well i'm, 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 not... I'm they, they count so no they don't they ask they to be do, a guest though. mikhail counts because no. he's guest no they all count sorry all i don't right. make the rules well, man scotty's being stubborn <laughs> uh mikhail what are you working on right now uh let's plug your twitter real quick here yeah you plug yourself plug everything at carl mikhail home uh, you, he's a writer for smartscouting.com. So make sure you go check that out. What are you working on right now? Well, uh, I've just announced with my friends that we're starting a podcast. We have, uh, the first episode coming out. I don't know when, when this episode is coming out, but, um, it's Thursday, coming out this week. Thursday. Okay. So I, I think the episode will be coming out some. Maybe before then, maybe after then, but it will be this week. Uh, it's with me and my friends Dylan Griffin and Jordan Millet. Uh, it's called Slipping Down the Board. It's a purely prospect uh, Hell yeah. uh, podcast. Can the, can the first uh, episode be about me and how I'm slipping down the board? <laughs> no, you flip too far. <laughs> <laughs> so many clips. So many clips. <laughs> So yeah, so that we can plug. Uh, it's um, it's a fairly new pod, and we're trying to figure everything out. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's gonna be fun doing podcasts with those two idiots. And um, uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Then you can also find my work at Mikhail Holm Substack.com, where I write about Swedish prospects. You can also find my work at Smart Scouting, where I'm European crossover scout. So I do a little bit of Sweden, mostly Sweden, but also across europe uh, and uh, yeah that's where you can find I, most of my stuff is getting published on twitter at comic at home as you said so yeah i know you also post videos too uh, like specific clips of like he- highlighting swedish prospects like plays and that's what makes your your twitter account such an interesting follow is because not only are you talking about these prospects but you're also like giving like video evidence like here is what they're good at so that's like a number one reason why all you guys should follow uh, Mikhail home. If you want to know anything about these Swedish prospects, he's going to have video to back it up. It's really interesting. It's really good in-depth knowledge. Um, Absolutely. Stick giveaway. Got to plug that at the end. Oh, yeah. Giving away a Vlad Nemesnikov stick, guys. So make sure you uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Post a screenshot in our replies of the tweet. Uh, it's pinned to our profile. And then on Friday's episode, we're going to announce the winner. So make sure you do that. Got to plug that every day. Yes, sir. Other thing I got to plug every day. Thanks for making Lockdown Red Wings your first listen every day. Now make your second listen to Lockdown Bets, the your uh, one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Lockdown Bets is hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. They are free and available on all platforms. Mikhail, thank you so much for uh, taking the yeah, time to talk you. to us today about Red Wings prospects and the future of the NHL. 
Uh, it was great to have you on, man. Thanks for having me on. Great to see you again, Scotty. Yeah. And great yes, to meet sir. you, Brian. It's nice always to fun to you. be on this podcast. We're better than the Sharks. Remember, he said it. He said it. <laughs> <laughs> I get to talk, well, I get to talk with William Eklund. So. You guys are tied. Uh, you said that. we were better. I'm He's saving. I'm saving the part where you said we're better. So <laughs> that's, we're that's what's going to happen. On sharks. That's what's happening. 100. <laughs> um, we're we'll back with a new episode tomorrow. This is going to be Thursday's episode. So another be... guest tomorrow. Oh no, no this is Thursday's right. We're so recording a lot on the same is, day. I yeah. have to work the Elton John concert at on Wednesday at Little Caesars Arena. So I won't be able to record on Wednesday night. Oh, so this is Thursday. So we should tell this people game game recap of the Philly game will be tomorrow's episode. Yes, because I'm not getting on with Scotty at three in the morning when I finally get home from the Elton John concert to record the recap. Even though so I this, will be awake. <laughs> I, I will be awake too, but I will be a zombie. So Friday will be the recap of the Philly game and the preview of the next Philly game. So same time, same place. It's your team every day. Every day.